Hey, hey, Scorpios, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot, and we are about to do a reading for your sign today. <clears throat> that being said, of course, this isn't a personal reading for you. This is a general reading for a large collective group of people. It may resonate with you. It may not. If it does resonate with you, that's awesome because that means the cards are speaking directly to you through me today. If it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay too. It just wasn't your story, right? I do recommend that you check out and you know your sun sign, which today is Scorpio, your rising sign, and your moon sign. Your sun sign, Scorpio, is how you receive information from the world. You receive information as a Scorpio, right? It comes in and you process it as a Scorpio. Your moon sign is how you feel about things. This is in your core. This is where you process this information that came into you. And your ascending sign is how you spit it out to the world, right? So whatever your ascending sign is, you're going to bring it in as a Scorpio. You're going to process it as your moon sign. And you're going to deliver it back out into the world as whatever your sun, your um, rising or um, ascending sign is. So there's a link in the box below. You can check it out. Find out what at least those three elements are in your astrological chart and will give you a much more comprehensive perspective of the things that are going on in your particular situation right now. Cross watch it for yourself and if you're a cross watcher cross watching for Scorpio, it would definitely behoove you to know their moon sign and their ascending sign as well. All right, um, I wanna say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all the requests for personal readings that I've had. It's amazing. It really is. It blows my mind that you guys would trust me to read for you for your for your personal situations. And um, I'm truly humbled and very grateful for the um, warm reception that I've had from um, my YouTube subscribers. Thank you very, very much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, watch the video. If you like what you hear, go ahead and hit sub subscribe and Maybe the little dingy bell so you get notifications when I post videos. All right. Oh, yes, a personal reading. A personal reading. We can hook you up just like this, just for you, just for your situation, for 40 bucks. TaurusStarTarot.com. Everybody keeps saying it's too cheap, it's too cheap, but I don't care because I'm loyal. I'm loyal to my YouTube subscribers. You guys have been amazing. And for you, a reading is 40 bucks. okay? So you can hook it up at TaurusStarTarot.com. All right, well, let's get straight into this reading and see how it goes. Oh, yeah, disclaimer, this channel's probably R-rated, so if my swearing offends you, um, go someplace else, because I am who I am and it is what it is. All right, let's get started. You enter into this reading. Oh, yeah, new setup, right? New setup. I'm uh, visiting my brother up in the polar vortex in far northern Michigan, so this is what I have to work with, so I don't know. It is what it is. Okay, so you start this reading with the Seven of Cups, right? The Seven of Cups is about choices. You have choices in your life about your future, about planning for your future. The King of Wands comes in and says these choices may also have to do with success, career, work, things like that. But you're, you are looking to make successful decisions about planning for your future. The Nine of Cups comes in and says that you are trying to work your life out in order that you can have your wishes fulfilled, comfort, happiness, and satisfaction, right? That's what we all want. That's what we all strive for is comfort, happiness, and satisfaction in our life. <coughs> Excuse me. So you open this reading having choices and options in regards to planning for your future. The King of Wands says that um, it might have to do with planning for work as well. However, whatever it is, you definitely um, um, are, are having a feeling of, of success, right? You, you're, you're feeling good about the choices and the decisions that you're making when it comes to planning for your future. Judgment. You're making some kind of life-altering decision right here. Judgment is an actual executed decision. You know, we can make a decision and roll it around in our head till the cows come home, but until we actually implement it, it's meaningless. Well, you are implementing some kind of decision right here that is going to change the trajectory of your life. This decision is about teamwork and collaboration, coming together with one or more people and um, 
collaborating, teamwork, coming together, right? Working on, working on things. This decision that you've made to come into a, a era of teamwork and collaboration has to do with the Six of Cups. Now this Six of Cups can either be reuniting and reconciling with somebody from your past. It absolutely could be. Or it could be this decision is about home and family and children and and things that um, make you feel warm and fuzzy about, about your life in general. Queen of Wands comes in and says this, this past, I guess I should have looked at these cards before I said that because the Queen of Wands comes in and says that this person from your past is the Queen of Wands, right? So you've made a judgment call. Sorry about that. I, I These cards are fresh to me. You know, I lay them all out and I ask for clarifying cards, but I don't study them till I turn the camera on. So forgive me for that. So you're making a very serious decision about coming together with somebody from your past. This person from your past is the Queen of Wands. This Queen of Wands is somebody that you see as a very successful, exuberant, independent woman. She has a, a, some psychic ability going on there as witnessed by the black cat. And she is, um, she's an entrepreneur. She's a businesswoman, right? She's full, full of determination, vibrancy, and exuberance. At least that's how you see her. Temperance comes in on top of that and says that you see this as purpose for your life. You see this as, as purpose. Wheel of Fortune comes in and says that this is going to be a turning point in a life cycle for you. Okay, Reuniting or reconciling with this Queen of Wands character is going to be a turnover in a life cycle for you. It's going to be a turning point in your destiny as witnessed by the judgment card, right? I told you, judgment is a change in the trajectory. We're going to be this way now and we're not going to be that way anymore. Wheel of Fortune comes in and says the same thing. It's a turning point. It's a, it's a changeover of life cycles, right? And I wanna point out that, you know, the Wheel of Fortune, a change in your life cycle isn't a gimme, okay? It is earned by the universe because you have learned whatever it is that you needed to learn from the cycle that you're currently in and now we are being afforded the opportunity to have a a new life cycle begin a lot of people spend perpetual motion in a life cycle counterclockwise motion in a life cycle because they never learn anything from the situation that they're in and they just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Well, the universe right here says that they feel confident in your ability to take everything that you've learned from your current life cycle and apply it to a new life cycle. And they're giving you the opportunity to move forward in your life. The tower. So we have a tower moment, something, something, and based on these cards that I'm looking at just at face value right here, I don't think this tower moment is like an upheaval and chaos and the destruction of the very foundation by which you've built things. I think this tower moment is a revelation or an awakening, an epiphany of some sort that makes you understand something that you've never understood before. This tower moment results in the Page of Pentacles, the manifestation of a new opportunity. This could be a new financial opportunity, or it could just be opportunity in general. This opportunity is going to give you a sense of self-sufficiency, a sense of gratitude, and it's going to be a culmination to an issue that you've had in your life. I do believe this issue, based on the placement of these cards, this issue is about this Queen of Wands and reconciling with this Queen of Wands. I think you're having some kind of an epiphany, some kind of understanding within yourself of what your focus needs to be on. 
what comes next is the death card. So you've had tower, tower, and now death, right? This death card is about an ending. An ending, just like the wheel said, right? An ending to one life cycle, the beginning of a new life cycle. This is about change in your life, in your environment, change in the way that you think about things, right? An ending, a change, a transformation, and a transition, which again is evidenced by this wheel back here. A life cycle is ending. A new life cycle is beginning. And I want to point out that it's 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 a hard turn. It's a hard right-hand turn, right? Right? Your GPS comes on and it's like, turn left. And you're like, oh, shit. <clears throat> turn left, right? This is a hard turn in your life. Because you have the wheel and the tower, right? I, I said a minute ago you had two towers. You don't. You have a tower later somewhere in this reading. But um, so the wheel of fortune to the tower, to the new opportunity, to independence, self-sufficiency, gratitude, and the culmination to everything that's happened before, right? So this is a hard turn in your life right here. It's like an about face. It's like you have this epiphany and you're like, whoa, I should have been doing this the, the whole time. I should have, I should have done this a long time ago. This epiphany is in regards to, well, I want to say this is a dual purpose card, okay? This epiphany that you have gives you a sense of celebration. It gives you a, a sense of, of, yeah, you know, cheering to yourself that, woo, I finally figured this out. I can't believe that it took me this long to figure this out. But the Three of Cups also indicates a third party situation. So I just want to throw that out there, okay? So you've had some kind of an epiphany that brings joy and celebration to you on the inside. Could be, could not be about some kind of third party situation. But you are going to take, you are going to transition as witnessed by this death card right here, a change, a transformation, a transition. You are going to transition towards, see how it's going towards the Empress? You're going to transition towards this empress now this is the card of taurus could be a taurus in your life it, it could be it very well could be a taurus in your life um but this card is about abundance and growth and and fertile soil by which to plant your ideas and grow your abundance okay so take it either way either way it could be in regards to life and work it could be that this is something that you're going to grow abundance in if this is a love reading and you're reconciling with this Queen of Wands character in a love relationship, then the Empress represents um, the be all to end all, right? She's the culmination of all the queens in the deck. She's just a badass, right? So you're transitioning into this Empress energy. The Eight of Wands comes in and says you're doing it very quickly. This epiphany, this revelation that you had right here this this sense of celebration that you have inside because you finally figured something out um, you're gonna act on it and you're gonna act on it quickly so what we have over here is old Diablo the devil right this is a card about human nature that's why it's the card of Capricorn because Capricorn is an absolute master at observing and watching human nature Caps get a bad rap because their card is the devil card. Everybody's like, oh my God, toxic. And and yeah, maybe it, it can represent some toxicity. But this card is about human nature. It's about restrictions, addictions, um, your shadow self, self-depraving thoughts that, that, we, that we sometimes spin around in our head that we would never share with somebody else, but, but they're in our head. This card is also about um, attachments and sexuality. So whatever you have here, and, 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 the, word, and the, the, the toxicity from this card comes from allowing the situation to live in your life. That's where the toxicity comes from. If it's an unhealthy attachment, an unhealthy addiction, I guess all addictions are unhealthy, if it's an unhealthy attachment, an addiction, 
some kind of restriction blockage in your life um, or or you just telling yourself self disparaging things like I can't do this and I suck and this is never going to work for me right so let's find out what this devil is for you right here okay okay so this devil energy is clarified by the five of swords this five of swords is is utter and complete conflict right utter and complete conflict in your life the five of swords is about tension conflict tension loss defeat a win at all costs attitude betrayal and mind games now it can also be about being open to new change in your life but i really want to say that this is conflict some kind of conflict some kind of betrayal some kind of deceptive be behavior has been going on that makes you feel very defensive and guarded in fight mode right this conflict that is in your life has you in fight mode has you in fight mode and you've been waiting for a minute with the three of wands it's blocking you this devil energy right here this conflict that has you feel so feeling so guarded right is blocking you from moving forward it's blocking you from having foresight and and knowledge to plan for your future right to plan for your future i also want to point out that it's a three as well just like the three of cups could be some kind of third party situation this devil energy right here could be somebody that you are with that you're trying to get loose from okay but whatever it is it is blocking you from progressing in your life it's blocking you the four of wands comes in and says you've been thinking about this for a good minute you've been contemplating for a good minute about this toxic energy which tells me that you recognize it okay and i think maybe that's what this epiphany over here this this um change and transformation in your life this epiphany back over here with the tower moment i think that's what this might be this might be you finally once and for all recognizing the toxicity of a relationship that you're in love family work okay but you're recognizing some kind of toxicity in your life and you've recognized it for a minute but you're not real sure how to go about it right and you, you've been and it's blocking you from progressing in your life four of swords says you've been contemplating it for a minute the ace of pentacles comes in and says that you want to cut it loose and you want a brand new beginning in your life right a brand new beginning the ace of pentacles is also about um it, it's about a brand new beginning but it's about a brand new financial beginning as well it's about manifesting a new beginning with the princess of swords this princess of swords comes in and says that you are formulating a thought process you're formulating a decision you're not executing it yet you're not even really talking about it yet but you're formulating it in your mind princess of cups comes in and says that this this these thoughts that you're formulating in your mind contain a message of creative new beginnings and synchronicity right so you're trying to figure out how you can get out of this situation and start something fresh and new in your life the princess of cups she's a messenger of feels and emotions right so a new beginning formulating a decision formulating your thoughts and a decision about about sharing your feels with somebody and and having a a a, a creative new beginning in your life the alchemist or the magician comes in and says manifest manifest it which i think you have been but that's what you're doing with the princess of swords as well you're really turning it on now i mean you're you're really really manifesting 
um, a way out of this situation. The King of Cups comes on top of it and says that you are um, waiting, to, you're waiting to have emotional stability and control. You're waiting until you have yourself in check, all of your T's crossed, all of your I's dotted to do whatever it is that you need to do to break away from this relationship, this toxicity in your life. The tower moment comes in though and says, uh, no, says no, Scorpio, no. You know what you need to do. You know how you need to do it and, and lollygagging about it is not acceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. So the tower moment, second tower moment in this reading so far comes in and pulls the rug out from underneath you. The tower and death are things that we cannot control. The tower and death is the universe coming in and giving us a kick in the pants. The, the tower moment is saying, the universe is saying that you've spent too much time in this toxic situation right here. Too much time because you're not taking action, right? You're thinking about it. You want it. You want a new beginning. You want synchronicity in your life. You want to have emotional control. You want to manifest love in your life, but you're not doing it, okay? You're not doing it. So the tower is coming in and giving you a kick in the pants, and it's going to be um, another epiphany, a, a, an awakening, because over here you had all of this and you want to take swift action, but then you come right back over here and you're stuck again. You're stuck. And this tower moment right here is saying, go, do, be, go, do, and be. Because what we have in store for you is the star card, hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. But you can't get to the star card until you deal with the devil, okay? Let me make that very, very clear, okay? You cannot have hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life until you deal with this toxicity that's in your life, until you deal with this restriction, this blockage that is keeping you from moving forward. So until you deal with this toxic energy right here, you may as well stop right here and click the video off because the rest of this doesn't apply until you deal with the devil. Once you deal with the devil, you have hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. The Nine of Pentacles comes in and says that you have a sense of gratitude, right? You have a sense of gratitude, and two Nine of Pentacles, by the way, a sense of gratitude, a sense of self-sufficiency, and there is a culmination to your, your, your struggle to, to loose this devil over here. The Seven of Pentacles comes in and says that you um, are not seeing the profit and reward. You are not reaping the benefits of the time and effort that you have put into this toxic relationship right here. Justice, good old karmic justice. That is a real thing. It's a real thing. <coughs> justice comes in and says that there will be truth fairness, cause and effect, or law applied to the situation. This lady has, has the scales of justice in her hands, and she has a sword in her hand, right? She is about to cut out bullshit in her life, and that is what you're doing right here, dealing with this devil card. She's going to cut out the bullshit in her life, in your life, and she's going to, to, to weigh with the scales of justice what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is proper and what is fair. She, what is she going to cut out? Well, first of all, she's going to cut out this broken heart right here. Okay, she's going to <laughs> cut out your heart. That's terrible. But she's going to cut out the painful feelings right here. She's going to help you cut loose from that devil right there. 
and she's going to help you heal your broken heart. She's going to help you heal from a feeling of being left out in the cold. She's going to give you strength to bear your burden that you are so caught up in your head about, right? This karmic justice is going to come into play in your life and release you from this mental bondage that you keep yourself in, in regards to this toxic relationship right here. What comes next is the Princess of Pentacles. Once you have released this, okay, once you have worked through this whole row right here and, and have released your mental imprisonment, your restrictions, right? Because remember I told you that this is a blockage for you to move forward in your future. Once you release all of this, the Prince of Pentacles, Princess of Pentacles comes in and, and, and says the manifestation of a brand new opportunity, possibly a brand new financial opportunity, crossed by the Two of Wands, something that is going to give you an opportunity to plan for your future. The Two of Wands is about future planning, progress, decisions, and discovery. Progress is the key word right here because you were not making progress over here. Progress in planning for your future and moving forward. The Five of Cups. The Five of Cups comes in and, talk, and talks to us about loss, regret, disappointment, despair, bereavement. But it also talks about moving on from those feelings. Moving on from, from any kind of residual attachment that you may have to this devil energy right here. You're moving on from it. You're taking on the energy of the King of Pentacles, right? This King of Pentacles, he's about security, control, power, discipline, and abundance in his life. No longer will you be down in the mouth and, oh, poor me, and, oh, this situation, right? No, you're going to take on the energy of the King of Pentacles because you have loosed yourself from this toxic energy. The sun card comes in and says that you're seeing clearly now. You're seeing clearly. The sky has parted. The clouds have blown away. And you are seeing for the first time in what I think might be a long time, clearly. What are you seeing clearly? You're seeing your ability to, to obtain the Ten of Cups, right? This is about harmony, marriage, happiness, Values alignment, it's the be-all to end-all. It's everything that's good and right and proper in a love relationship. In any relationship, okay? It doesn't have to be a love relationship, but in any relationship. And this is all that you want because whatever this, this devil was over here was just shit, right? It, it, it was not what you need in your life. And, and you knew it, and you knew it for a long time. But for some reason... You were uh, chained and bound to the foot of the devil. Now you see the light. Now you see the forest through the trees. Now you have regained your power as the king of pentacles. The moon card. The moon card suggests a little bit of fear and confusion. A little bit of fear and confusion. What are you fearing and what are you confused about? What are you squinting through the windows of life trying to see what's really going on? Why? Because it puts you in the Nine of Swords just really hard up in your head with the High Priestess. Let's get a clarifying. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get a clarifying card for this. Why the Moon card? Okay. Why the Moon card? What is Scorpio not seeing clearly? What does Scorpio, what is the illusion that's going on here? What is, well, what is this moon, moon card? Oh, the High Priestess twice, wow. The King of Pentacles. The struggle is real, worn out. Self-sufficiency. King of Pentacles again with the High Priestess again. Hmm. 
So this is saying that this moon card right here is about you not trusting. You're not trusting something right here, Scorpio. The high priestess comes in and says, sit down with me for a minute. Sit down with me for a minute and let's talk about this, right? Let's, let's, let's touch your, your subconscious mind and your intuition. And let's sit down and talk for a minute about your confusion, about your, uh, about your illusion, maybe. The Nine of Wands comes in and says that uh, it's been a fight for you. It's been a fight for you to get here. And you're feeling a little battle weary. You really are. You're just feeling a little battle weary. I mean, this guy's working hard. He's planted eight of these sticks in the ground. He has one stick to go. And he's just really not sure if he can do it. He's like, just like, oh, geez, really? What was I thinking? <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles comes in and talks about self-sufficiency with the king of pentacles so what's going on here is that you're lacking you're lacking the confidence you're lacking confidence with the moon card you're lacking confidence maybe this toxic relationship up here is just really taking it out of you right Maybe that toxic relationship, it, it has left you standing here like, dang, you know what? I just don't even want a relationship anymore. I don't want a partnership anymore. I just want to, I just, ugh, I just can't. It's, I just can't. I think you're a little battle weary from coming out of this devil energy right here. Sitting down with the high priestess, talking about it, trying to gain some self-sufficiency, right? So you can be the king of pentacles so you can have power control abundance and authority in your life whatever this was over here kicked your ass though for sure nine of swords comes in in its extreme definition the nine of swords is about depression nightmares intense anxiety and despair but it's also about a painful lesson and this is what this card is for you. You're reflecting back at this painful lesson right here. And you're battle weary and you're like, oh, <clears throat> I don't even know if I want to do this anymore, honestly. I just really don't know if I want to do this anymore. You're reflecting back on this painful lesson. How do I know it's a painful lesson? Because the hangman comes in. This is where you're processing. All of these are, are, are emotions and thought processes, emotional and thought processes. Every one of these cards is an emotional thought or thought process, right? Or both, probably both. The hangman comes in and says, you're going to pause. <sighs> Take a deep breath. You're going to surrender to all that has been. And you're going to come out on the other side with a fresh perspective. That's what a sit down with the high priestess will do for you. Going to come out on the other side with a fresh perspective. Look, high priestess, second time in this little pocket right here. And that's what this card is saying. Sit down with your intuition, your subconscious mind. Take a break, Scorpio. Breathe. Take a break, okay? Take a break. Get, get yourself together again. Pause. Surrender let go and come out on the other side with a new perspective. This pausing for you right here, this moment, this meeting with your high priestess, fills you with a sense of excitement. It rejuvenates you, okay? It rejuvenates you and it gives you a sense of enthusiasm and exploration, right? Discovery and a free spirit. It, it really just rejuvenates you and excitement comes back into your life. Now you have some balance and some priorities, right? You, you, you just, you just, this is you taking a break right here and just chilling out for a second, integrating all that has happened, integrating your thoughts and your feelings and, and just coming out on the other side with a new perspective with a sense of excitement and balance and prioritization in your life. The Ten of Swords, what? The Ten of Swords is all about being backstabbed and defeated, crisis, betrayal, endings, and loss, right? However, this card is also about recovery, regeneration, and an inevitable end. 
there's an ending to the conflict in your life. There's an ending to the conflict. The conflict is going to end, okay? The Prince of Swords comes in. This is action-oriented communication. That's either going out or coming in. Let's see. This Prince of Swords right here. What is this Prince of Swords? What is this communication, Tarot? What is this communication that's either coming in or going out for Scorpio that ends in the Four of Wands and the Lovers? What is this communication? Ha! Huh. It's about balance and prioritization. So I think you're going to give some type of communication, probably to this Queen of Wands character up here, that, that your life is now under control. Your life is under control and you have balance and probably want to make a relationship with her, whether it's a business or love, a priority, right? It doesn't have to be her, but the queen is a queen is a queen, right? Well, I don't know. I guess maybe that's not true because I know I know quite a handful of queens that aren't female. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I really do. There's a burlesque show in uh, Denver. I'm in Michigan right now, but in Denver, there's a bur burlesque show. And um, I actually met this guy by accident and he, he looked like a normal guy, right? A, a regular old Joe. And he gets in the car and we start talking about things. And it turns out that he is, um, he is a drag queen. And he invited me to his show that night. And I went and it was amazing it was amazing and ever since then I've kind of been you know keep in touch I'm on the Facebook page and stuff like that and I'll go every now and then it's a good time if you've never gone I highly recommend going to a to a drag queen burlesque show it is it's the best time you'll ever have so anyway all that to be said this queen up here doesn't have to be female right but uh, she is embodying the female energy of um, of the the, the um, the uh, hierarchy of the suit of wands. So balance and priorities, right? So you're going to communicate with somebody about balance and priorities in your life in regards to a love relationship. Four of wands comes in. This is the, the soulmate card. It's 1111. It's, it's one, two, three, four wands. 1111 just is. Um, so you're going to communicate balance and priorities in your life in regards to a love relationship. This love, this, this communication that you send out is all about um, celebration, harmony in your life, harmony in your home, harmony in your place in the community, and potentially marriage or some kind of coming together to build a foundation by which to live your life upon. With the lovers, lovers, four of wands, lovers, with the lovers, okay? Um, in a love relationship. Wow, Scorpio, that was the last card of this reading. Turo, is there anything else? Is there anything else that you want to throw out here for Scorpio that we need to know about? Anything else? Anything else that you want to throw out here for Scorpio before I do a recap? Anything else? Whoa, that one's gone. <laughs> Anything else? Temperance. Purpose, patience, balance, moderation. Look, the Queen of Wands, she came out again. Three of Swords in Reverse. Three of Swords in Reverse is all about coming out of heartbreak. It's about releasing pain, having optimism, and forgiveness. Which is what you're doing. Which is what which is what all of this was about right there, right, Scorpio? Releasing pain, having some optimism, and some forgiveness. Anything else you want to say, Tarot, before I do a recap? Anything else? No, they're quiet. They're quiet. Okay. This card over here, that flipped out a second ago. 
is the Ten of Swords. It's about recovery and regeneration. Nice. All right. So if uh, this video is a little bit too long for you, Scorpio, this was your reading. You can probably click off now and I will see you next time. If you want to hang around, I'm going to do a real quick recap, okay? So you have to listen and um, pay attention because I'm going to go real fast through this, all right? All right, let's do a recap. So, Seven of Cups, decisions that you have to make in regards to planning for your future. The King of Wands, this could have to do with business. This could be you feeling very, very successful in yourself about, about the decisions that you're making in your life. The Nine of Cups comes in and just like everybody, you want happiness, you know, happiness, home, wishes fulfilled, comfort, satisfaction, right? You're making some kind of very, very important decision in your life, executing an important decision in your life about the Three of Pentacles coming together with teamwork and collaboration in regards to reuniting, reconciling, coming together again with somebody or something from your past. This somebody or something from your past is the Queen of Wands. This is an independent woman, right? She's a little psychic. She's a little she she's a little intimidating. She's exuberant. She's determined. She is a, a boss lady, right? She's a boss lady. So this card could be talking about you coming back together with somebody that you've worked with in the past, or this card could be coming could be about coming back together with somebody that you see as an independent, self-sufficient boss lady. Temperance comes in, says that you, you see this as purpose in your life, right? You see this as purpose in your life. The Wheel of Fortune comes in. Universe grants you with a brand new life cycle. You see coming together with this person from your past as a turning point in your destiny. The Tower comes in and says you're going to have some kind of, of an epiphany, an awakening um, that that spurs on some kind, so, some type of, of, of a new opportunity for you. The Nine of Pentacles comes in and says that um, it's going to give you a sense of self-sufficiency. It's going to be a culmination to the situation. And this is also about um, an independent woman as well. An independent female energy, okay? <laughs> the death card comes in and says there's going to be an ending, a change, and a transformation in your life, which makes you feel joyous and celebratory. Could be talking about an ending, change, and a transformation in regards to a three-party situation. The Six of Swords says that you are going to transition towards the Empress. This is the card of Taurus. You may be dealing with a Taurus. You may not be dealing with a Taurus. But whoever this or whatever this Empress is, it stands for abundance and fertility and new beginnings. The Eight of Wands says you can go quick. You can go quick. You're not screwing around anymore. However, what you have to do first is deal with this devil energy right here. This toxic situation in your life, person, place, or thing, whatever this toxicity is in your life, you absolutely must deal with it before you can get from here to here. This is a blockage, okay? It's a blockage, note that. You're gonna take swift action, but boom, blocked to getting here because you have to deal with this first. What do you have to deal with? Some kind of toxic attachment in your life that is causing a roadblock. This toxic attachment in your life fills you with conflict. It just fills you with conflict. It makes you feel guarded. It puts you in fight mode, right? And it's keeping you from planning for your future. It is preventing you from moving forward. You know this. You've been thinking about this for a good minute. What you want more than anything is a brand new opportunity away from this toxic energy. You just want a brand new start, right? Princess of Swords says that you are formulating your thoughts and opinions about this situation. You're formulating your thoughts and opinions. You want, you want a, a, um, you want synchronicity in your life. 
right? This is a messenger of creative new beginnings. This is what you want. This is what you're thinking about in the Princess of Swords mode, right? It's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about this Ace of Pentacles, a new beginning. You're thinking about the Princess of Cups, synchronicity in your life, a messenger of creative new beginnings. You want a new beginning. You want to get away from this devil energy. The alchemist or the magician comes in and says, manifest, manifest it. Now, manifesting Manifesting is more than just thinking about it. If you'll notice in this card, he has all four elements. If manifesting was just about thinking it into reality, he wouldn't have these tools in front of him. He'd only have the sword, right? He would be the magician holding a big fat sword like the justice card, but he's not. He has all four of those. What this means is when you manifest something into your life, yes, you think about it with the sword, absolutely. You think it, you are what you eat, you become what you think. But he also has the pentacle, pentacles, earth energy. It's about doing the work, right? It's about the legwork. It's about going to meetups. It's about exposing yourself. It's about um, going out there and hunting for what you want. It's, a, it's about hunting for what you want. The cups, the cups represent the magician, um, um, taking all of his feels and his emotions, sitting down with his high priestess, who is the, the, the high priestess of, of emotions, right? Sitting down with your subconscious mind and your intuition and drawing it unto yourself. The wand, none of this happens without the wand, right? Because that's our passion. That's the, that's the fire in our soul, right? So the wand is the leader of manifestation. You have to have the fire in your soul in order to think about it enough to become it, in order to get out and hit the streets and do what you need to do to make it happen, in order to have the desire to sit down with your high priestess and put your emotions and your feels into something, okay? So this card is about manifesting this new beginning, Scorpio comes in with the King of Cups and he says, I need to get control of myself first. I need to get control of my emotions. I need to put my ducks in order. I need to have things the way that I think that they should be before I can move, before I can move in any direction, right? Forwards, backwards, up, down, doesn't matter. You know, see that, that card, that guy's sitting there with his hands like this and he's just trying to, to keep himself under control. The universe comes in and says, no, bro, you have sit in this, you have sat in that devil energy for way too long. You need to get the hell out of Dodge. You just do. And they are going to, to create something in your life that gives you a huge awakening, maybe even a rude awakening, because up here, you're not heeding the tower moment yet. You're, you're not doing it because you, you want to do it, but you're blocked. So the universe comes in again and creates a tower moment, gives you some kind of an epiphany, some kind of, of revelation about what it is that you need to do to loose yourself from this devil. Could be upheaval and chaos. I mean, it could be the whole wrecking ball coming in and just, 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 you know, totally, you know, pinning down, you know, making you tap out, right? But whatever it is for you, it is going to cause hope, faith, renewal, and spirituality in your life. The Nine of Pentacles, it's going to give you a sense of self-sufficiency, a sense of gratitude. Self-sufficiency, gratitude, and it's going to be a culmination to all of this. The Seven of Pentacles comes in and says, you just really are not happy with what you've been doing. You're not happy with the investment that you've, that you've made with your time and your effort and your person. You're not happy. You're extremely disappointed in the results that you've seen based on the effort that you've put in. Justice comes in. Justice comes in and says that we are cutting it all out. Karmic justice is on its way because you've earned the wheel, right? Because you've earned a new life cycle. Justice is going to come in and cut out all the bullshit. What's justice going to cut out? It's going to cut out the Three of Swords. 
It's going to it's going to cut out heartbreak. It's going to cut out feelings of being left in the cold. Justice is going to give you strength to carry the burden, the, the strength to put down the burden that you've been carrying up in your head for so long. Comes next, once you deal with this, you can't go from here to here. You can't go from here to here. You have to go through this. Once you deal with this, what comes next is the Princess of Pentacles, the manifestation of a brand new opportunity, potentially the manifestation of a brand new financial opportunity with the Two of Wands on top of it, giving you the tools and the resources to plan for your future, which is what you're trying to do up here. The tools and the resources to plan for your future. The Five of Cups says you are walking away from a sense of sorrow and loss and regret and despair. You're walking away from it and you're taking on the energy of the King of Pentacles. Abundance, power, discipline. <clears throat> Abundance, power, discipline, and control in your life. The Sun card comes in and says you're finally seeing things clearly. You're finally seeing things for what they are. The Ten of Cups comes in and says, that's what you're going after. You're going after the Ten of Cups, right? Everything that's good and right and pure that in a good relationship. Business, home, family, love. The Moon card comes in and says that, that you don't know where to go. You don't know how to do it. You're confused. You just don't, you don't know where to go. High Priestess comes in and says, sit down with me for a minute. Let's sit down and talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about your struggle, about your burden, about your feelings of wanting to give up. Let's talk about the culmination to this situation. Let's talk about your sense of self-sufficiency and independence. Let's talk about getting you into the energy of the King of Pentacles. Let's get you out of your head. Let's get you out of your head. And that's what you do right there, Scorpio. You pause, you surrender, you come out on the other side with a new perspective. This new perspective is directly related to your sit down with the high priestess, directly related to you searching your intuition and your subconscious mind. The princess of wands comes in and it says that you have a renewed sense of passion and exuberance for life. The two of pentacles comes in and says that you have um, some balance, some priorities in your life. You know what's important to you now. You know what you're supposed to do. Ten of Swords comes in and says there's an absolute inevitable ending to ending recuperation and regeneration when it comes to the conflict in your life. The Prince of Swords, this is action-orientated communication. You're fixing to tell somebody about this whole experience that you just had right here. You're fixing to tell somebody about balance and prioritization. You are about to prioritize a love relationship in your life back to the Queen of Wands. You're about to prioritize a love relationship in your life. If it's not a love relationship, it is definitely a relationship with somebody that you care very much about. Either you care very much about the person or you care very much about the relationship. But you're about to prioritize this relationship. This relationship is going to create for you the Four of Wands. It's going to help you build a foundation by which to live the rest of your life from. Sandwiched between lovers again. A, 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 a love relationship, okay? If it's not a love relationship, it's a very, very strong relationship. Temperance comes in, says that this is purpose. What's purpose? This Queen of Wands up here is purpose. Maybe she holds the key to your future. Maybe she holds the key to your financial or business success. Maybe she holds the key to your heart, okay? But whatever it is, she's purpose in your life right now. You are going to release pain. You're going to release pain. You're going to have optimism in your life. And there is an inevitable end to all of your pain. You are going to recover and regenerate into this beautiful thing that's waiting for you. Okay? That was your reading, Scorpio. If you'd like one just for you, just for your situation, 40 bucks will hook you up at TaurusStarTarot.com. Namaste, my friends.